It's just about learning. Place the Migdash right away, immediately. Just be for Shlema for Yisrael Nassim Ben Sarah. And um, Aaron David Alevi and Menucha Adel Esther. It's one of the Bachram in Yeshiva. Okay, we're going to start off Dalit. We're holding by the Iba Yaseima, which is about, uh, is that 11 lines from the top? Yeah. The line starts with the word be Yisrael. There's an English Gemara over there, but they're laying on the marble. Daftalad? Daftalad, yeah. Okay, remember what's going on. We're talking about uh, um, New Year's for uh, New Year's kings. for kings, which is relevant for, for documents. So we said if a king becomes a king and uh, um, the 29th day of Adar, we start saying that it's his, uh, his, he's in his second year one day later. That's what we said. Because Rosh Chedesh Nisan would be the New Year's for Kings. And we, we learned that from two, two possibilities. Either from Shleim HaMelech, actually, I think they're both from Shleim HaMelech. The question is if it's uh, um, compared to Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim, which we have in Malachim, um, what is that, Perik Hay or something? Malachim Perik Vav, when he decides he's going to build a base in Migdash, and it gives us 480 years from Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim, and it's his fourth year and something in this, the second month. Mm -hmm. So we, we compare that, or it's from Divri Ayam. Okay, then we came up with a, uh, with a, a statement from Rav Chizda that that's only for Jewish kings, but not for non-Jewish kings. Non-Jewish kings are from Tishrei. And we quoted- Like the Rosh Hashanah. Yeah, regular. Uh, yeah like, like our Rosh Hashanah. So we quoted, um, where was this? In Nehemiah, that Nehemiah, it's clear that it was from Tishrei. That Tishrei would be the, the new year. When have How did he have that? Counting the actual year, like uh, 57, 82, uh -huh. et cetera. When, when did I don't know. <laughs> uh, year from creation. That's uh, the calendar we use now. Oh. Yeah, but it's based on Seder Island. But Seder Eilam is officially Rabbi Yossi ben Chalafta, Rabbi Akiva student. Oh, okay. um, so he gives us the history. But we don't rely on it 100%. You know, that's why if you, when you write a document, like a get or, or something, it's a, you write the year 5782, uh, five, to <laughs> so the way we count it over here. And oh, we're not like yeah. saying like, as if we have that 100%. We say, the way we count. So, so did the counting of the count not accept the Seder Olam? We accept it. Because I don't, we use no. It's not, it's not the, the, the Chazal that are doing this. I think the people used a different count. And Chazal are telling us how, how to write the document that would be clear to the people of what you know, they're, they're, rec they're recording for us the way it was done. It's the description. I don't know if it's the proscription. I think it's the description of the, uh, of how the documents are written. Yeah. So otherwise it's always referenced from an inauguration or something, they say a certain number of years past. Right. The coronation of. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry. Continue. Oh, uh, it seems that so far, when it says the second month of such and such a year, or you know, third month, but then it has to do with Nissan. But when yeah. it actually says ER or Nissan of of that year, and then it has to do with T shirt. I wonder if that's going to be consistent. Uh, yeah. So, so you're 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 right about that. That when Rishon Hulachem Lachad Shana, that if I'm giving a number of a month, I, I'm I'm supposed to use Nisan. Actually, the uh, the Chassam Sefer made a big deal about not writing. Um, what month are we in now? Uh, October. Um, ten is it? Ten? What is October? Um, not to write ten. Uh, what's today? The thirteenth or something? Uh, 
1013. Not to write 1013 because that's a violation of Rishonu Lachem Lachat Shana. You should write October 13, which is no problem, which is what uh, Daniel saying. That there's no problem to say another month, the name of a month, but you can't give it a number oh, because the Torah says now. that the first month is Nisan. It also sounds weird to say the second month of the third year. It's, it's different. It's like different counting. They're going. Right. One is going on from Nissan, the other one is going from Tisha. It's, it gets very confusing. Right, right. <laughs> Once you view the number as just the name of a month, Nissan is month one. Then, then the year doesn't really matter. It's just the, the number turns into a name. <coughs> yeah, but the it seems gets, like so the number gets capitalized. <laughs> right, right. But it seems like so far the way it's written, when it, it's consistent, the month and the year are written they're saying, right. if, it's, if it's going by teacher, they're just saying the, the name of the month. Right. Yeah. Okay, so now we had a problem. What's our problem? Our problem is, is that we found that non-Jewish kings were also being counted by Nisan, which was the Jewish king. So the answer to that, we gave an answer that, well, um, that was Kairish, and he was a, a, um, a kosher king. So we decided that because he was such a good king, we're going to give him the the counting according to the years, the, according to the way we do it for Jewish kings. But we said, yeah, but it's the same one, Kairish, Dayavish. Uh, no, we said, but it, first of all, it wasn't Kairish, it was really Dayavish. And Dayavish gets once by Nisan. One time it gets counted from Tishrei. And we prove it that the year changes. Mm -hmm. So we said he was Hechmetz, he went sour. So we asked, what do you mean he went sour? He was sending Karbanis to the base of Migdash. So we said, yeah, but he did it for his personal reasons. He did it for his own uh, intentions. He wanted us to pray for him. So he said, well, there's nothing wrong with that. That sounds like a good thing. So we'll give tzedakah so that so there's a Rabbi Nechanan that says Yeshim Afarshim Rezu Tzedakah Gemurah instead of Tzadik Gamar. Harizu Tzedakah Gemura. Whatever the case is, there's no problem with, uh, with, uh, with doing that. So he said, yeah, there's no problem for a Jew doing that. But there's a problem if a non-Jew does that. He said that that's not considered sincere if a non-Jew does it, if a Jew does it. One of the commentaries say that possibly it has to do with that if it doesn't work out, he'll regret everything that, uh, that he did. If, it's, you know, if it doesn't get healthy or whatever he gave it for. By the Jew, we say, okay, at least, uh, you know, I gave it also for the mitzvah. So now we're up to be by Yosema. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Dr. Stein is saying that it's in the Tanya. That I mentioned yesterday that I have an old Tanya that they took out that piece. <laughs> yeah, it was a censored piece. Yeah. Okay. Viba Yaseima, another, another uh, explanation. How do you know that Daryavish went sour? We're saying now that Kairish Daryavish and Arsach Shasta is all the same king. So how do you know that he went sour? I don't have commas in here. It's hard Aramaic from uh, Ezra. The Evan Galal Tlasa. Uh, rows of stone, three rows. The nadvach and nadvach is a row. The 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 aa I guess chadas, and one row of wood, new wood. Uh, one row one row of of, nud, of wood chadas is one. It sounds like chadash. Does it mean? Does it, is it chadash or chadas? Chadas. Is it does it in the translation does it say one or new? That word is could be uh, it could be one or no. I don't know. Okay. No. Um, what does it say? No, no wood. No. So chadas, chadas says in chadash. Yeah, the tough in the shin. So venafkis, uh, the expenses min base malkata to siav. You're going to give it from the house of the king. I'll pay for the expenses. Sounds good, right? What he's saying, he went sour. It says. Lamale David Hachi, why did he do this? Why did he do three rows of stone and one row of, of what? So Savar Imardu Iklai Benura. If the Jewish people rebelled, I'll burn it. 
Beis Hamikdash. He's giving the the uh, the uh, the materials for the Beis Hamikdash. He wants one row to be made of wood. It's like a delete button. If you they change anything, yeah, I'll, you know, it all of it has to be exact. So he's mixing wood in because he wants it to be able to burn if he doesn't like what's happening. The Gemara says, is that really a problem? He built the first base of English. He didn't have wood in it. Exactly the same. We have in Malachim. There was three rows of cut stone and a row of of uh, of cedar wood, of cut cedar wood. There was wood in the base of Migdash uh, by Shlema, so it's just a replica. So why are you telling me that he was so bad because he had wood in there just in case to, what's the problem? Oh, so one second. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying where the wood is. Yeah, they keeping you in suspense. Spoiler alert. So it says like this, the Gemara gives three, um, Three answers, three differences. Shleisha, uh, I'm sorry, Shleima Avad Melmaila, Vio Avad Melmata. Shleima put the wood on top. He put the wood on the bottom. If you burn the wood, you burn the bottom under the, under the rows of stone. So when you burn the bottom, the wood, so then the whole structure collapses. So he put in there like this, um, this, this way of, of, of destroying it, self-destruct self button. <laughs> so that's why he was bad. Shlema put it on top. Okay, so the top of it is going to burn. Okay, so the, the structure is still there. Yeah, I know in the, um, by the Crusades, how the, how the Christians made it into the, uh, to the old city was they got some, um, information of where they can burn the it was wood underneath the walls and they got some information how to burn that and then it, they were able to get through mm -hmm. so yeah that's what they would do they would find out where the weak the weak point was and then it would collapse they would use like this oil <laughs> they would use this oil that would burn through the wood they would like throw this oil on it and it would burn like naphtha and stuff and anyway Oh. Uh, that's a very good point. Naftali is saying, what burnt? When they burnt the base of Migdash, what burnt? The, the wood burnt. Very good. Yeah, very bad. <laughs> okay. Shlaima, another answer. Shlaima shaki bibinyana. Iule shaki bibinyana. Shlaima had the wood deep inside. It wasn't, it was sunken in was behind the stones or it was deep in. He had it exposed. It would be easier to light. Shlema Sadi Basida, Yulai Sadi Basida. Shlema had it covered with plaster, the wood. And he didn't have it covered with plaster. We're talking about Kairish Dayavish or Asasashta, whichever one. They're, they're, all the kings have the same name. So Caesar. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we just have another a second answer to how we know that he went sour, that uh, this, the king went sour and why we switched the way we count him from Nisan to Tishrei. Rabbi Yosef, Itamer Rabbi Yitzchak, or Amar Rabbi Yosef, Itamer Rabbi Yitzchak, Minolon de Achmetz. How do we know that he went sour? Mehacha, in the following. <coughs> this is Pasuk we quoted before, that Nehemi gets the report of what's going on in Yerushalayim from his brother, Hanani, or figurative brother, or his actual brother, I don't know. And then um, he gets that report in Shvat, and then he goes to, um, to the king in, 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 in Nisan. He goes to the king, and he says over, uh, well, he, first the king says, how come you look so sad? Uh, and this, he, he wasn't drinking the wine. He thought, so he says, um, why should I not be sad? You know what's going on over there? It's destroyed, and, and please send me back to, to fix it up. So while he's talking to him, the description was that he's talking to the king, and the king tells him or whatever, how long are you going to go for? It says, The king says to me, 
now there's a description there. It says that the Shegel, which we translated as the queen, was sitting next to him. And they asked the question, how long are you going for? When are you leaving? And uh, my Shegel, what is the Shegel? Amar Rabba Barlema. That's a new one. Yeah, Rabba Barlema. Yeah. It's not the Yiddish, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll see that in a minute. Let's see, you're jumping ahead. Mishmei de Rav, in the name of Rav. Kalbasa, it's a female dog. Yeah, there's a word for that. <laughs> and um, and uh, apparently what here, what the concern was, we're talking about why the um, Daryavish went sour, is because he had a female dog that he would actually uh, live with. No, bestiality. bestiality. And the problem is, is that a, uh, the children of Noyach are forbidden in Gili Arayas, and this is one of the Gili Arayas. Now, in the Parshas Noyach, it doesn't say this. Parshas Noyach, we have the the, um, the Noahide laws without this one. But this one is in Parshas Parashas. This goes back earlier, because over there it says, that you'll become one flesh, man and woman will become one, one, one flesh. Probably referring, there's two explanations that the Ramban gives, but probably, uh, it, let's say it's referring to, to have children. So you can't marry anyone that you wouldn't be able to have children with. That's besides for the Arias and all of that. Yeah. But also, also and any animal or something would be forbidden. So if that's the case, so they're not happy with him not keeping the, the Noahide laws. And so therefore they count him from Tishrei. Okay, they switched. I'm a ra, 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 um, sorry, Elamayat, if that's the case, that Shegel, if, you, if you're telling me the translation of Shegel, that it's a female dog, Hadiksiv al Marash Mamta. This is Daniel talking to Balshatzar. He says, is it Daniel talking to Balshatzar? It's regarding Balshatzar, that uh, what he was doing wrong. It says, you, you lifted yourself up over the uh, God of the heavens. Ulamani di haisev kadama, and the vessels of his house were in front of you. Ba'ant and you, bravervonach, your officials, sheglosach, your shegel, ulachansach, that means concubines, chamer shasim behind, we're drinking wine from those vessels. Okay, it's all good until the dog is drinking wine. The dogs drink wine. Dogs don't, don't drink wine. The dogs are, are, are dogs picky eaters. I don't know. But um, what? Would the dog drink wine? Would a dog drink wine? Sure. Uh, they drink beer. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway, there's a surprise over here. That the dogs are drinking wine. It's a little bit surprise, surprising that the drug the dog would drink wine. So the Gemara says, Holy kash, the mouthful of a you could train a dog to do anything. You can train it. If you train it to drink wine, it'll drink wine. It's not a problem. They had the dog drinking wine. Rashi. Okay. <laughs> uh, if that's the case, the Ksiv, we have a, a bus can till him. The daughters of the kings were your favorites. Nitz, uh, are, will be your favorites. Nitzvah shegel yimincha b'kesem eifer. The shegel will be standing on your right with the uh, gold of Ofer. Ofer gold, special gold. So what is the... V'yishegel kalbasi, ka'maykam avaslu novali Yisrael. What's the Navi telling the Jewish people that you're going to have prince, uh, princesses um, will be there... And the uh, the there'll be a shagel on your on your on your right. What's the big deal? What are you telling? What's what kind of uh, uh, um, uh, in in from in in for, nice inform, infor, information is that that there'll be a dog there? So, by the way, it's very interesting that it says Navi. David Amelach is usually not called the Navi. I mean, not that he wasn't the Navi, but he was called other things, Imzamiris Yisrael or something. Um, so Hachi Kamar, this is what he means. What the Pasuk means is that the, 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 
is that because the Torah was so beloved to the Jewish people, the way the dog, the female dog, is beloved to the non-Jews, there's a comparison there. So that's why you're going to merit the gold of Ophir. Ophir is a place. So. Yeah. I don't know, some special gold. Pink gold. <laughs> Because the Jewish people love the Torah to the extent, now the example of what the extent is, is the way that the non-Jews love their female dogs. So because of that, the Jews will merit the gold of Ophir. Yeah, they can't find a better, uh, <laughs> a better uh, parable. <laughs> I mean, you can say you can love the Torah, you can love the children. <laughs> I don't know. My wife told me on one of the giveaways, uh, there's a giveaway chat, like people, like, I'm, uh, like, uh, so one day, one of the mothers was in the middle of the summer, put a, put a uh, picture of their kids up. <laughs> but uh, so, no, Avram Nassim is saying that, um, why can't they use example like they love their children? I'm saying, because it's not always. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Be by the same. Uh, yeah, I guess um, this was an example of something that we'd be very attached to. So the Jewish people are very attached to the Torah, like the Dafyami uh, members. Be by the same, and another another pshat. If you want, you could say Loilam Shegel Malkasi. The truth is that the word Shegel means a queen. So why did Rabbi Barlema say that by Kairish or by Daryavish it was meant the dog? Rabbi Barlema Gemara Gamala, he had a tradition that over there it meant something different. But that would explain the Pasuk and Tilim, Nitzvah Shegel Yemin for the Kasmaiva, that the queen will be there with, uh, with gold, will be standing on the right with gold. That's perfectly fine. The Pasuk makes sense now. Okay, but my Kari La Shegel. Um, Why was this dog called Shegel? Because this dog was as beloved to this king, Kairish or Dayavish, just like the queen would have been, or as the queen was. Or else the dog had a position in the uh, in the courtroom, in the in the in the court, in the um, in the king's court, as um, in the in the position where the sat in the throne. The dog sat is this on his referring to King? Is this referring to Cyrus? Yeah. Is this uh, Esther's son? Cyrus? Or could be. Son? It could be. In the Steinzels, it said that we're, we're talking about Artaxerxes the first. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that helps at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ah. Okay. Another pshat. How do we know that the Yavish went sour? Mehacha. It says, Ad Kesav Kisr Meya, Vad Chantin Kurin Meya, Vad Chamer Bosin Meya, Vad Bosin Meshach Meya, Umelach di like Savchulu. Because the, uh, the king is give. first he says, You'll take whatever you need for the base of Mikdash. Then he says, Now it says later, it says that you'll get a hundred kikar of silver. You'll get a hundred core of wheat. Yeah, Chantin, uh, correct. Um, Zalman told us yesterday. It was wheat. And a um, hundred bus, which is a measurement of wine, and a hundred bus of oil. And salt will be as much as you need. Okay. But because he's now giving a limitation, now he's cutting down on his uh, donations to the base of Migdash. So, okay, he went sour. Where says, how do you, that's a proof. How do you know? Maybe originally he says, you'll take whatever you need because he didn't know how much it was going to be. And then when they started to see, they, the accountant came in and told them what they need for daily. So then it turned into a hundred of this, a hundred of that. Doesn't mean that he's cutting down. Rather, the pshat is probably the way machvarta means it's white, it's clear. The best pshat would be the way we said before that there was they were unhappy with him because he was living with the dog. Okay. 
We have a new Gemara. Much easier. <laughs> Next Gemara. It's a long sugi though. The, this, the following sugi has to do with Balta Acher. That if you um, have a donation that needs to be brought to the base of Migdash, you're not allowed to delay it. Uh, what's, when, does, when is it considered that you delayed it for too long? It's going to be, we're going to say, for three holidays. But it's, there's a big machlekes about this. Machlekes tanoim. Machlekes in the, uh, the Mishnah and the Brisa. Okay, Ulu Regalim. We said that Rosh Chodesh Nisan is the Rosh Hashanah for the holidays. Regalim, the Echad Benisan who? The holidays began on Echad Benisan. The, the regal is the holiday. The Chamish Asa Benisan it starts with Pesach. So that's the 15th of Nisan. I should say it starts with Chag Amatis. Pesach is the 14th of Nisan. It starts with Chag Amatis, it starts with the 15th. Um, Rav, Chizda, Rav Chizda says, Regal Shabai Rosh Hashanah Le Regalim. We don't mean that it's the first of Nisan. We say that the first of Nisan is the month that has in it the holiday that's the first of the holidays. Follow? Yeah. It's not what we thought we meant. Yeah, we had we had this before in Beya. We had this had this in yeah had this in a few places. In Beya was a big sugi about this also. Nafkamina, what's the difference when the holiday has its uh, has its New Year's? It's a new year of the holiday. The holidays start over. What's the difference if the New Year's start over? If the holidays have a New Year that they start over, Lenoider, to someone that makes a vow, Lemekam alav baltaacher to say that when he came too late, he has one cycle of holidays to bring his vow if he takes too long he's considered that he uh that he uh he delayed too long the balta you shouldn't you shall not delay postpone you shan't, can't postpone bring it so that, i remember reading that sukkus is like the deadline yeah we'll, we'll have that in here that's uh, that one of the opinions is that sukkus several opinions is that it's sukkus Reb Shimini, and we're following the opinion of Reb Shimon. Reb Shimon is always Reb Shimon, Reb Shimon Yeah. When do they say Reb Shimon Bayechai? When do they say Reb Shimon? Some say it depends if it was before the cave or after the cave. After the cave was Reb Shimon. Before that it was Reb Shimon, Reb Shimon Bayechai. That's what some say. The Tanya, um, it's, we have a Brisa. It's a Tesefta here. It says, Echra Neider, whether someone took a vow, Rashi points out that when we say a vow, it means the person says, I'm, I, I pledge the, my value, how much I'd be worth as a slave to the base of Migdash. Be'echadamakdash, or someone that consecrates something, an, an item to the base of Migdash. Be'echadamarech, or someone that says, I don't pledge my value as a slave, but I pledge my value of in my age. Remember, that every age had a different uh, price. Erechen. So Kivan Shavar of Gimel Regalim, once three holidays pass, Iver Baltacher, then there's a violation. Now, the first tan, the first Tana doesn't say which three holidays, what's the order of the three holidays. Does that apply to your I'm sorry. Oh, it doesn't apply to the donations to the show. They joked about um, on someone's tombstone. It said he passed away this date as of some other, you know, because they post dated checks and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so okay so um i think that was the uh, jewish press joke what was that what was that guy's name arnold fine arnold fine oh, yeah i remember <laughs> right okay so um this opinion doesn't care the, the tanakama doesn't care when the, the beginning of the holidays are if the person pledged before shavuos his third holiday is going to be well, it starts with Shavuos, Sukkot, Pesach. After Pesach, it would be a violation. He just says, Kimach Havel, Shalish, Regalim. Once three holidays pass, he doesn't say that it has to be in any certain order. The Tanakhama doesn't have a Rosh Hashanah for the holidays. Reb Shimon, I'm a Gimel, Regalim, Kisidron. Shimon says, and that's why we're saying it's Reb Shimon, that they need to go in order. Chagamatz is Tchila, that it starts always with Pesach. So Pesach is going to be the Rosh Hashanah. So if you get all three, Pesach, Sukkot and Shavuos, then that's the violation. But let's take this first. Pesach, Shavuos, Sukkot. So let's say, And so would Rabshim Shem Meichai, it's interesting now, we call him Shem Meichai. He would say, 
Regalim, when it comes to the holidays, Pamim Gimel, sometimes it's three. Pamim Dal, sometimes it's four. Pamim Chamish, sometimes it's five. Because you always need a starting time of Pesach and an ending time of Sukkot to, to commit this violation of delaying it. Ketzad. How does this work? Nadalifnei Pesach. If you took the vow right before Pesach, so then right away starts the count. So that's Gimel. Pesach Shvua Sukkot, he violates it by the end of Sukkot. Lifnei Atzeres, let's say he took the vow right after Pesach, sometime before Shavuos. So now he has Chamisha, he has five. Why? Because Shavuos and Sukkot don't count because it always, the count starts from Pesach. So Shavuos, Sukkot, Pesach, Shavuos, Sukkot. So he gets five holidays to bring his uh, donation. Lefnei Achag, but if he does it after Shavuos, he takes the vow before Sukkot, sometime in the summer. So then he has one extra holiday. Yes, Sukkot doesn't count. And then Pesach, Shavuos, Sukkot, and has four. Taner Abanan. So that basically our Mishnah, it fits well. We have this importance of that, knowing that Pesach is Rosh Hashanah because of the opinion of Rav Shimon. When um, can you give your uh, offering, the carbon? Is it only on Achag? No, you could always on... bring it. Oh, even but people weekend. would travel for the Yom Tif, mm -hmm. And then it was actually wasn't brought on the Yom Tif itself. Okay, it was right. brought on the weekdays surrounding the Yom Tif. Okay. Yeah. Chayove Hadamim, those people that took a pledge of their own value as a slave. Boerchen, those people that took a pledge of the value based on their, their age. Hacharamim, someone that dedicated something to the Bedekabayas. Bektatius, or other types of, of, um, of um, consecrated items. Chatois, Ashamis, sin offerings, guilt offerings, oilis, shlamim, tzedakis. Burnt offerings, peace offerings, or, or charity donations. Meisers. Meisers is a huge problem when we mention Meisers. The Rishonim go crazy over this. Because Meisers, we have every three years, it has to be done. It has a different, uh, it's a big problem with, that this word is mentioned. Anyway, there's, there's a bunch of answers, but it's a huge issue. Bechar, that's a firstborn, a Meiser, or it's a carbon, uh, a Meiser Behema. Or Pesach, it's a carbon Pesach. Lekit shikhu peya. It's these um, gifts that go to the poor of leket with a, you know, a stalk that fell or a bundle that was left in the, uh, in the field. Or if it's peya, that means the corner of the field. Kivan shavala shal shagalim. If three holidays passed by and they weren't given, over balta acher. We don't say which holidays they are. Any three holidays pass by. That's the Tanakama. Reb Shimon Aymer. Reb Shimon. That happens in the field, right? Is this why I also call Nidre is be right before service? No. Mm -hmm. It says Harame. That's a very interesting chat. I have the same question. That's very, no, it's very creative chat. What are we doing, Kol What are we? Uh, what are we yeah. annulling the vows before? Uh, but here, because Sukkot is about to come, and the truth is, is that that even something you, you could do hataras and for for um, for these things. <laughs> you can you can say that I, I that chala. You can it says about chala. You can be shayal. You can ask the for hataras and and it will uh, it will go off. So maybe that's the shot. We're trying to avoid those violations. Very interesting. Why don't we do it on Sukkot? Right, right. But maybe someone forgot. It's, it, it, it helps for vows that people forgot about. Well, the problem is it doesn't help for a vow that someone vowed to his friend. I'm not sure. Maybe it's because no one knows about it. He didn't actually tell anyone. And then so it, you, can't, you can't nullify your obligation. So, right. But let's say someone had a pledge in his mind or something, or he made a pledge with his word. He verbalized it. He verbalized it. Let's say he verbalized it. He forgot about it. But he didn't tell it to anyone. He just said it like uh, well, as he's he walking to show. He, he pledged, and no one knew that. Did he really make the pledge? So, oh, so he, between him and Hashem, he made a pledge. 
So what uh, Daniel is saying is that so Ataras the Dharam, when did when did you have to to bring that pledge? Before Sukkot, according to some opinions, Rip Shimon. So that would make sense why we do it before Sukkot. Very nice. Oh, I didn't realize that. Uh -huh. uh, Naftali saying, I, I'm, I'm not sure uh, if three times, if you have to do Hagaymal and three times, they, they read from the Torah three times, then you don't do it, then it's too late. I, I thought it was, you, you're supposed to do it within three days, but you're saying it that has to do with three times. Uh huh. Okay. How do I trust for answers my question? Go ahead, so tell me. If the guy, it's not that he forgot to do the shit that he took it. He took it, uh, he so took it inside. He held it, right. He now is obligated to uh, take it out and give it to the person. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. So Dr. Stein is, is saying that Taisvis answers the question about Leket like Shikha and Peya. You're supposed to do it in the field. It doesn't have to do with three holidays. You're not supposed to take it in. He says, well, he took it in and then he, he took it, he stole it. He has to put it back out. <coughs> so he has three holidays. Okay. Reb Shimon says that it's three holidays in order. And it always starts from Pesach. We learned Reb Shimon's opinion already. Reb Meir Aymer, Reb Meir says, Reb Meir is Reb Shimon's friend. They're both students of, uh, of Rabbi Akiva. Kivan Shavar la Regal Echad Aver Baltacher. Once one holiday passed, you're too late. Yeah, this is good for the show. To pay it before the end of the holiday. Can't have a holiday pass. Rabbi Lezer Ben Yaakov Aymer, there's actually two Rabbi Lezer Ben Yaakovs. But, um, it's a, it would be around the time of Rabbi Akiva as well, as Rabbi Akiva's students. Kivan Shavra Aleim Shnei Regalam Ever He has an interesting opinion. He says two holidays. Rabbi Elazar Bar Reb Shimon Aimer, who's Reb Shimon Bar Yechai's son, Rabbi Elazar Bar Shimon says, Kivan Shavra Aleim Chaga Sukkos Ever Aleim Baltachet. He says, it's also one holiday, possibly. Could be two holidays, could be three holidays. It doesn't matter. It's Sukkos, which is the cutoff point. So it could be one holiday, but it could be more. Just depends on when it was done, but Sukkot is the cutoff point. It's like April fifteenth, uh, right? You it's the cutoff point. point. I don't care when you made the money. April fifteenth is the. <laughs> you, you could do it like the last day. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes. We'll see. My time at the Tanakama. What's the reason for the Tanakama that says it's three holidays? Michti, Minaya Salak. We're discussing Parshas Re. It says Bechaga Matzis, Bechaga Shvos, Bechaga Sukkot. There's the three holidays there. Now, in that Parshas Riyei, we, we read it on the holidays. Uh, what is it? Kala Bukhar or, or something. As, uh, yeah. So um, it's discussing the holidays. Why do you, does it then repeat? Why does it have to repeat that? It says the three holidays to tell me that you have three times. That's it, the order doesn't matter. That's the, the, the just saying the fact that you said three the three holidays repeated. That's to tell me that you have three holidays to bring in your your pledge. Yeah. In the davening we say, you know where that tune is from? It's from Tisha B'av. Elitzia in where we say it in that tune because we're trying to remember that we should have the base amygdala. That's the Chazanim did that, that's a, yeah. You follow that? It's interesting, no? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I got two trophies here. <laughs> okay. Reb Shimon Aymer, Einet Tzarech Leimar, B'chag HaSukah Shabay Dibar HaKasav. Where does it say, B'chag HaMatis, B'chag HaShuas, B'chag HaSukah? It goes through the holidays. And in the section where it talks about sukkahs, it then goes over, it says, Shalish Pam Bashana, Bhagamatsu, Bhagashwas, Bhagasukas, Blayura Panairekha. But it's in the in the section of sukkahs. So sukkahs is the one that didn't need to be mentioned. Shmaminala Baltacha. I'm sorry. In the Shabai Lamanamar, 
Why did it repeat it? It's coming to tell me that Sukkot is going to be, you have three holidays, but Sukkot needs to be the last of the three, which means it starts from Pesach. Reb Meir, my timer. Reb, what's the reason for Reb Meir? The Ksiv of Vasa Shama Vesim Shama. He's going to another source. He says that you should come there and you should bring your, over there, your donations. You should come to the base of English. Forget about three holidays. When you come, the first time you come, you have to bring it. That's the, for any holiday. For Rabbanon, what do the Rabbanon do with that Pasuk? That Vasa Shama Vesim Shama, you have to bring it right away. They say, yeah, of course you have to bring it right away. We're talking about the violation of Balta Achet, not the positive command to bring it right away. Hahula say, that's a positive command that you should bring it right away. Okay, so you didn't do the positive command, but that you did a violation that you didn't bring it, that's a different story, right? The positive command and the negative, don't delay, is another, is a different story. But Rab Meir, the Rabbanan are right. That's only a positive command. It says, Kivan da Amalei Rachman Aisi Velei Aisi Meila Kamalei Balta Achet. Meir says, if the Torah tells you to do it, and it also tells you don't delay, when does the don't delay kick in? When, at, when it says that you have to do it, so which means any holiday. Because you have a positive command to bring it any holiday, if you don't do it at that holiday, then the negative command comes in, and it, you, right away there's a prohibition of Baltacha. That's how Reb Meir does. That's how he gets uh, Baltacha and, and any holiday. Reb Lezer ben Yaakov, my time, Reb Lezer ben Yaakov said two holidays. It was a very interesting opinion. It says, So you should do for Hashem on your holidays. There's a plural there. It's talking about the, you bring karbanas, but you should also bring the donations. Two holidays. You have two holidays to bring it. But Rabbanan, what does Rabbanan do with that? That is, they learn for your holidays. They actually learn a different limit from that. Rabbi Yaina says, Rabbi Yaina, kulam zela kulam We have a sacrifice that's brought on Rosh Chaydash. It's a sawyer, it's a goat. That is an atonement for someone that, that um, uh, unknowing to him, made the, came into the temple when he was impure, or he ate a sacrifice that was impure. So um, it turns out that every holiday, we also have a goat that's brought. It's coming to tell me that just like the Rosh Chaydesh goat is an atonement from Tomas Mikdash Shekadash of so too, Rabbi is not on there, I don't think. Rabbi is a is possibly a uh, a Myra in in um, in Eretz Yisrael. May have been in, uh, like a teacher of uh, of Rabbi Yechonan or something. Look in the Eretz Yisrael uh, Amirayim. You see the line? Yeah, right there. There's a line that divides Bavel and Eretz Yisrael. Rabbeinu should be in there. Okay. So all of the, every holiday, we have an atonement again for Tumas Mikdash. Why does he come up with this opinion that it's Sukkot? says, the time he was taught in a b'risa, Rabbi Lazar b'shem and Aymer, lo yamar chag ha-sukkot shubay di barakasav. Don't mention chag ha-sukkot. B'chag ha-matzah, b'chag ha-shuvah, b'chag ha-sukkot. Why do you have to mention that? You were talking about chag ha-sukkot. That's the whole story over there. Chag ha-sukkot, ta'as ha-lacha, shuvah siyam. We're talking about that. You don't have to repeat it. Leimar Shazeg Gairam is coming to tell me that that's the only one that matters. That's the cutoff point. If the, the other ones it was going to tell me, but that you have to come to the base of Mikdash and bring your sacrifices. But the extra one was Chag to tell me that that's the cutoff point. Rab Meir, that says you have one holiday. Rab Lazar ben Yaakov, that says you have two holidays. What do they do with the three holidays that are mentioned there? Why does it mention the three holidays? It says, They use it for Rabbi Lazar Amar Rabbi Yesha. Now, of course, Rabbi Lazar Amar Rabbi Yesha is way after um, Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Lazar Ben Yaakov, but the tradition was there. <coughs> you have Rabbi Yaina there? Oh, oh, he's much lower than. He's lower than Rabbi Yechonan. He's a he's a student. Same level as well, not yeah, Rabbi Yana is a teacher of Rabbi Yechonan. Rabbi Yana is a student of would be a student student in the yeshiva. Because Rabbi Lazar says name Rabbi Yechonan. Nine lat zeres sheish le tashlum and kol shiva. What's going on now is that when you come to the Beis Hamikdash for the holiday, you have to bring a, a shlamim called Shalmei Chagiga. 
the Chagiga offering. We'll get to that in Masechtas Chagiga. But um, you have to bring this peace offering. Now, you don't actually bring it on the holiday. Um, actually, that was unclear if it's brought on the holiday. I think there were two opinions there. But um, there's a discussion if it's brought Erev Pesach, if that gets its own Shalmi Chagiga. Uh, but there's Tashlumen. Tashlumen means you can make it up. Now, for, yeah, it is brought. It, it could be brought on the holiday itself, but Shavuos gets a Tashlumen. Shavuos gets a Tashlumen. Look in the notes over there in the art school. Is it brought, is it brought on the holiday itself? I, I seem to remember there was a machlekes tanoim. If uh, this private offering is brought on the holiday, there was a discussion in Yuma, I think we had it. Um, whatever the case is, when would you bring it on Shavuos? There's no chalamayid. The other holidays, you bring it chalamayid. When do we do it Shavuos? So it says, how do you know that Shavuos has seven days that you can make it up? So we don't say tachnan until the 13th. Right, because we have seven days of Tashlumen after Shavuos. Thirteenth of Shavuos. Besides for the holiday. Right on the one day Shavuos and the next. Okay, days. yeah. So besides for the holiday, uh, um, there's six days, seven days altogether. Talmud Leimer b'chagamatzes v'chagashvus v'chagasukais. Those three, that list of holidays, there is to tell me that the same law that applies to to Pesach and to Sukkot applies to Shavuos as well. Makish chagashvus v'chagamatzes. It's it's a it's a it's a comparison that just like ma chagamatzis ma in in the gemara is just as instead of what just as chagamatzis yeshli tashlum and kol shiva there's a you can make it up for seven days because you have the intermediate days af chagashvus yeshli tashlum and kol shiva so also for shvus yeah you can make it up where it says why are you just comparing it to chagamatzis what about sukkus balekish the chagas sukkus malahalan shmeina afkan shmeina turns out. That because Sukkot has Shmini Atzeres, you're allowed to bring the Shalmei Chagiga and Shmini Atzeres also. You have an eighth day. Why are you giving only for, for Shavuos? Why are you giving only for Shavuos? Um, seven days, because you compare it to Pesach, compare it to Sukkot, you'll get an eighth day. So it says Shmini Regula Fnei Atzmo. Shmini Atzeres is a separate uh, holiday. One second. Amar Damrina Shmini Regal Bafneas Malinian Pazer Kashev. This is a, an acronym, the Rashe Tevot. <laughs> For uh, interesting halachas that Shmini Atzeris is different. What are those halachas? Remember on Sukkot, at the end of Masach the Sukkah, we said how the Kayanim would divide up. The 24 groups of Kayanim were all there in the base of English. Everyone wanted to bring the sacrifices. So they would uh, give out those sacrifices in a very interesting way. The 13 cows would go to them, and then the, this, we had it at, at, right at the last few daf of Masech the Sukkah was this was a discussion. When it comes to Shmini Atzeres, all of that um, way that it was counted out for the different families, it starts over. Pazer, there's a new, there's a new Pius. Pius was the, was the uh, lottery. Then um, that's the pay. Then the Shin is, Oh, Pazer, I'm sorry. The Pazer, the Zion is man, you say Shechiano again. And the Reish is that it's a regalatzmai, that it doesn't have the name of Sukkot there, that when you say in Davening, we don't say Chaga Sukkot, we say Shmini Atzeres we change the name. It has its own carbon, different than the, the way it was going down from the Parim. It doesn't go to seven, six, it goes to, starts one, one par. And then what was the Shin? Um, simcha. A cheer. Sheer. Very good. The song. The songs of Sukkot had to do with the with the harvest. And this has its own song. And then the bays. Remember what the bays was? Bracha lots. Bracha. No, so the bracha would have been Bracha Latzma. Rashi says that they blessed the king. Okay. Okay. Abalini Tashlumen, but when it comes to Tashlumen, they call Tashlumen the Rishanu. Everyone holds that it's the it's a Tashlumen for the first day. You have eight days over there. 
the Tanan, Mishle Chag, Yom Tevrish and Shal Chag, someone that didn't bring his, his Shalmi Chagig on the first day, Chag, Kol Regal Vyem Tevach and Shal Chag, you can bring it even on Shmini Yetzeres. The Gemara says, well, when we do comparisons, Tefasta Merubah Le Tefasta, you never go to the biggest amount. You always go to the smallest amount. Tefasta Mua Tefasta, you grab smaller, you'll end up keeping it. Take too much, no. So then what's Chagasukas doing there? I only need Shavuos and, and uh, Pesach. Well, that's Lakushe, Lachagamatzis. Machagamatzis turn Lina, Chagasukas turn Lina. Okay, they have to stay overnight. There's a rule that whenever you bring a carbon to the base of Migdash, you're not allowed to leave right away, like the trips to the oil. <laughs> They'll fly in and fly out. No, you got to stay in New York. No, you have to stay in Yerushalayim. When you bring the carbon, you have to stay overnight. Shouldn't make it just like a, it's like a quick thing. No, it has to be something with a, like dedicated time to the base of English. Where do you know that on Pesach? Because we're learning from Pesach. Um, where do you know from Pesach? It says, By Pesach, it says that you'll turn in the morning and you'll go home. That means you have to stay overnight. Okay. Um, Let's let's leave it right there. Yeah. Great job. Shkaya. Shkaya. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a good day. Have a good day.